everybody, it is Wednesday, November the 11th, 2015. It is Veterans Day here in the United States, Remembrance Day in the rest of the world, and it's also Radio Tokyo Day, woohoo! This is, uh, what, our third episode about BlizzCon. Today we're going to talk about more BlizzCon stuff. With me again, of course, is Nick. I don't know why he's here, but he's here. Hi, Nick. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm here because you bring me here. Why you bring me here? I don't know, but you do. You, you're just like, come, come on the show. Come on the show. And I'm like, what? It's like, yeah. Well, you actually are our most popular guest, I, even though I think Danny was probably it. But, you know, you, you, you're the most consistent guest that we've had. I I guess that's something to be proud about. Maybe I'm I'm not sure anymore. Oh, you're not sure anymore. Well, I'm sorry that I've just instantaneously relegated you to being a guest rather than co-host, and you just didn't even say anything about it. Nick. You're you're kind of like a Democrat in a presidential debate. It's the moderators just give you these hard questions, these you know ridiculous statements, and you're like, yes sir, yes sir, and just keep nodding your head. And you go about your... That's sad. Wait, are you talking about Democrats or Republicans? Democrats. They're, the Republicans actually fight back like toddlers, as you know. And speaking of which, this is a good time to mention it. Uh, the, the They called it the fourth uh, Republican presidential debate was last night, but it's more like the eighth because there's been two because uh, there's what's called the children's table. Which is the people who are never gonna get fucking elected, but they're still running. And then they had the main debate, and I felt so bad for Chris Christie last night because I watched both of them. And uh, Bobby Jindal actually offered him a juice box at one point in time, and they and the camera cut over to Chris Christie, and he had this motherfucker type look on his face. He was he he was pissed. You could tell he was pissed. And you know, of course, the last debate he was on stage with the adults, but now. He's at the kids' table because he's not doing very well. And last night, of course, you know, they I had... Do what? I, I still want to see a fight break out during the Republican debates. Well, it essentially I has... Will, I, I, it, it, it essentially has every time uh, because the moderators do not do their job. They don't make the, the, they don't make the candidate shut the fuck up about anything. And they let them talk on and ramble and... Holy shit. Okay, uh, they had... In the kids' table debate last night, I don't remember the question they asked them. Uh, oh yeah, 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 I do. Uh, which Democrat, uh, in you know, in, in Congress, whatever, do, do you respect? And not one of them could bother to answer the question. They just well, instead of answering that, I'm gonna talk about this, and they just went on and on and on and on. And it's like four people on stage just answered a whole other question. Uh, Carly Fiorina did it last night. Everybody on stage, in fact, did it last night. Especially Donald Trump, except for the question about his immigration policy, which, by the way, for those of you who don't know, and you missed the debate last night, and you missed the tweets that, that I sent out about it, because I was, I was busy last night, I was really busy last night, um, I think I gained more followers and retweets and favorites last night than any other point in time that I've been on Twitter, uh, but his immigration policy is to copy Dwight Eisenhower's policy, uh, which was called Operation Wetback, yes, Wetback. Uh, the derogatory term for people who have swam across the Rio Grande, uh, that, that, that was Eisen, that, that was Eisen, the Eisenhower program for sending uh, immigrants back to Mexico. And what happened was something like 10,000, 12,000 Mexicans that were here in the United States were sent home. They were uh, sent by ship down to Veracruz. They were taken overland, you know, f further down than that and just dropped off. And uh, in one month of operation, there was something like 88 immigrants who actually died because it was too hot, they didn't have food, they didn't have water, they didn't have shelter, they weren't allowed to contact their family members, they couldn't even get any things out of their house, it was just, you get on the bus, get the fuck out of here, and that's what Donald Trump wants to do, he, he, he wants to force people out, so I tweeted him, and I said, it's very nice of you to support Operation Wetback, and then Twitter went insane, and it was, it was, it was beautiful, and I actually got tweeted back by him, and it was a picture of him you know, doing like the V for victory sign, and the text on it said, how will I deport 12 million people? One by one.
I I honestly have no words for how racist that is. Or yeah. offensive. I actually laughed at it because I could not help laughing at it. It was like, oh my god. Oh my god, this cannot be for real. Uh, but, you know, I actually checked uh, his tweet record. And there's a bunch of retweets and stuff like that that get sent out. Uh, but the thing is, uh, most of them actually come from him. He has had a couple aides who he has accused of sending out tweets. Uh, but the reality is, most of them come from him. Uh, he actually averages 12 tweets a day. Now, there's a lot of stuff, you know, that's favorites and retweets and whatnot. Uh, and it was thought for a long time uh, that there was no way he could possibly be doing all this because there's so many things that get sent out. Uh, but, uh, no, it's actually him. It's been confirmed. He sits in front of a TV, uh, has, you know, has all n newspaper articles, magazines, whatever, that came out that day. He reads the articles he wants to read. He has the news on a big flat screen TV, and he sits there on his iPhone, because he uses an iPhone, even though he hates it. Uh, but, but he sits there on his phone, and he tweets and retweets all day long. That's, that, that's insane. Uh, but yes, I've been tweeted back by a presidential candidate. I, I'm not sure if there could possibly be a more racist or offensive potential presidential candidate in the history of the United States, which is saying a lot. I guess you've forgotten about Andrew Jackson and the, and just deport all the Indians. Make them walk 2,000. I, I guess you've forgotten about him. Uh, I, is this really that different? In fact, he would do it on a much larger scale. Y yeah, it, it, it's pretty similar. You know, you know what we ought to do? We ought to reach out to Donald Trump and see if he wants to be on the show. No, no, re really. This would actually be worse than the Trail of Tears. Somehow. It could be, it, but... This would legitimately be worse. But... Uh, what do you think about reaching out to Trump and see if, seeing if he'll be on the show with us? Sure, why not? I doubt, I, I sincerely doubt he'll do it, but that would be awesome. Uh, speaking of awesome, it would be interesting. Uh, spe speaking of awesome, last week and probably this week, we br actually it was started last week, now I think about it, uh, we brought up the Force for Daniel campaign. Uh, now, those of you who have, you know, followed us on Facebook or you're aware of what happened, uh, you might actually know uh, Daniel Fleetwood passed away, mm, was it Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, Monday. No, Tuesday, Tuesday. Uh, yesterday morning in his sleep, uh, and his wife uh, confirmed it over Facebook, you know, and she said that he is now one with God and one with the Force, and she thanked everybody who was part of the campaign. So I just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge uh, the passing of Daniel Fleetwood, the first person who's gotten to see the Force Awakens. and yeah, it's kind of sad to start the show off with him, but you know, it's it's it, it's still happy because uh, I know uh, that it made you know his last few days uh, very happy that he got to watch the movie. It, it, it was still was the only thing left that he wanted to do, and he got to watch it. So, so I'm quite happy for him. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's sad news, but. It seemed like he he died. Well, I mean, no death as well, but it seemed like he he died with a, a full heart with his loved ones around. You, there, there's not. You, you you can't ask for a lot better, honestly. You really can't. You know, so like, uh, I think out of all the problems that are bring up that that have been going on, you know, understanding that this was a moment. Where in literally a day and a half, a day and a half, uh, it was announced that, that that he wanted to see the movie. You know, his wife mentioned it, and he wanted to see the movie. And day and a half later, Daniel got to watch it. It, it was that swift. And out of all the things the internet has ever gotten in an uproar about or has ever done, I think that this is probably one of the most amazing things that's ever been accomplished by the internet. And I'm certainly, certainly beyond proud to have taken a part in the Force for Daniel campaign. Uh, I'm glad that I did the episode about it. I'm glad to mention it on Friday. 
I'm glad we posted it to Facebook, and I'm glad Daniel got to watch the movie. It's a really, really great feeling to have someone live out their dreams before they die. So, I, I, I'm sorry for Daniel's passing, but I'm sure he, he passed with a full heart and a lot of love. I think he did. I mean, it, it's, I, and okay, I, I understand, you know, the incredible amount of pain, pain that he was in because there's no way he was not, you know, with 90% of his lungs being tumors. But you know, it's good. He got to do the one thing he, I mean, literally everything on his bucket list. He got to do. This is the last thing. The internet's amazing. So thank you everybody out there who actually helped uh, with for, with for, with the Force for Daniel campaign. Uh, thank you to Disney and J.J. Abrams and uh, um, John Boyega and Mark Hamill and everybody else out there who tweeted about it and made Facebook posts. You literally made uh, this dying man's life wonderful. So, Internet's able to do some amazing things, apparently. It is. And we should do more wonderful things with it in the future. We should. We really should. Uh, speaking of wonderful things on the internet, how about BlizzCon? Since, you know, we are actually here to discuss BlizzCon, why don't we get into actually talking about it a little bit? And since that's supposed to be the point of the show, and we've talked, and, and you have completely derailed the conversation now, and, you know, just sure, controlled everything sure. going on. So, yeah. we need to talk about BlizzCon right. again. This this has been my master plan all all along to completely distract conversation from the thing I wanted to talk about. Really though, can you believe this is going to be our third show about this third, like actual genuine <laughs> hour long episode instead of being the little Radio Tokyo presents thing. Well, it's mostly because you, you 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 like to talk more when I'm here, which is why people like that I'm here. Cause, Cause, you, you open up your big, big heart to the people. The fuck are you talking See, about? I, I've, I've left you speechless. What the, what the I, actual fuck are you talking? about? Big heart? Are you, are you kidding me? I don't have a big heart. I bitch all the time. You, I bitch all, about all these games all the time. I mean, go back and just listen to the shows that we've done. You you just spent ten to fifteen minutes talking about how wonderful the internet is, and how we granted a dying man's last wish. That that is a special exception because he's dying. No, it's not. Anyway, shut up. But <laughs> anyways, fuck so, you yeah, and your not. nerd hair. It's the worst comeback you can possibly think of. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, by the way, but, uh, for, those of yeah. you who, by the way the, for those of you who are not aware, uh, the fuck you and your nerd hair thing is actually from a, uh, what the hell, uh, is actually from a, uh, an internet skit that uh, involved, I cannot remember his name, but it was supposed to be Batman and Superman, and they're arguing, and Superman is a dork, and Batman proves he's a dork. And Nick and I have essentially agreed that he and I are Batman and Superman. I, I am, of course, Batman yes, because I, I'm cooler and everyone likes me more. And he's Superman because he's a fucking nerd with his fucking nerd hair who inherited his abilities from a different fucking atmosphere. Because I make rational arguments and John just things. Your That's dad's why. dead. Get over your dead parents already. So are yours. <laughs> I'll bring it up. <laughs> I, I love that skit so much. Oh, you guys have no idea how much I love that skit. It makes, like, I, I have sat and watched that thing. It, it's, it's probably like five or six minutes long. I have sat and watched that thing on repeat for at least two hours before because I love it. It it just makes me so happy. And, you know, looking at that, like I said, is it, 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 essentially like watching a conversation between Nick and I. He, he, he's a little obsessed with it, yeah. I am obsessed with justice. 
because we're in the Justice League. Well, yeah, we are. And now Justice League is going to watch over BlizzCon and talk about Overwatch. Did 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 you just make a stupid segue into Overwatch? I did. Because if we didn't do that, you were going to keep going. What's wrong with keeping going on about justice? I mean... Anyways, so Overwatch, right? Yeah, what about it? It looks freaking awesome. See, I have only heard horrible things about Overwatch. I have heard that it is going to be one of the stupidest games Blizzard has ever produced... It's going to be shitty quality with really bad characters and no one no one is going to want to play it. I have heard that literally everyone is more excited about this than anything else at BlizzCon. Or that Blizzard has made before. Nope, nope, nope. It's going to suck. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you why it's going to suck. Because you pointed out the other day that it's a Please lot do. like... That, 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 that it's a lot like looking at a Pixar movie as a video game, and really, genuinely, who the hell liked Pixar? Well, I mean, they're only the best children's movie makers right now, with some of the best movies for children that a lot of adults enjoy. So no, 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 no. There are no everyone? there. No, Nick. There are no adults who enjoy Toy Story. There are no adults who enjoy uh, Inside Out. There are no adults who enjoy Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, Cars, Cars 2, Up. There's no I mean, adult you know, who enjoy any of those movies. Um, You wouldn't happen to be one of them, would you? What, an adult that hates Toy Story? Yes, I cannot stand that... No, but no, no. Really, I cannot keep up this facade any longer. I am actually excited about Overwatch, and I love Pixar movies. I think we've established that more than once, in fact. Mm -hmm. They are literally better. They, they became the new Disney, and then became better than Disney, which okay, is why right. Disney bought them. Pretty much, but yeah, I'm I'm actually excited about Overwatch. I really am. I'm looking forward to getting to play it, and it, 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 it actually kind of makes me sick uh, that in the year since it's been announced, uh, there has been uh, all these updates to the game, all these playthroughs, people have people have already been playing it, uh, you know, doing massive amounts of beta testing for it, because this is uh, the first first-person shooter that Blizzard has ever created, and it's amazing. Uh, it's going to be, what the hell was that? It, uh, anyway, it's, it's going to be available on uh, PC. It's going to be available on, I think, consoles too. I mean, it's going to have a lot of platforms to play it on. Everything but your cell phone, basically. Uh, but uh, it's it, it looks really, really good. Well, we can't confirm that. They might have a cell phone app eventually. We, we, we can't they, confirm that. They might, but, you know, uh, they have added in uh, new heroes, and I, and I don't think our graphic that we're using for this shows all the heroes they have, uh, but there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there, there's about, 20, about 25, 26 different heroes that are going to be in Overwatch. And I, they, and they, they I believe they said 21. I, f I think they said 21 is the official number, including the uh, the new heroes they were showing. Something like that, but they they, they added in several reskins that I guess you can count as new heroes, because they're essentially, I mean, they're going to have different names, uh, but they're going to have, you know, the same basic model, uh, and they're going to have uh, the same abilities, you know, but they're going to be a little different. Like, uh, there's one for, uh, I just went blank, I forgot her name. Tracer. Uh, what? Tracer. Yeah, that's, Tracer. That's, 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 that's what I'm thinking of. Tracer. Uh, it's her before she becomes Tracer. And she has you know, essentially the exact same ability. She does the same things. And she looks pretty similar. Uh, and she even, you know, it, it, It's just a reskin, really. Uh, it, it's a cool reskin. It, it looks really nice. But it's mostly just a reskin. All the reskins look good. They really do. And, and 
uh, I think it's, and, and that's why I think it's possible to treat them as brand new character. You know, I mean, typically when you look at a reskin model, it's like, oh, it's the same thing. Look at World of Warcraft. Uh, there are I, more. Reskins. I wouldn't say that because the, the uh, I would say in order for it to be a new character, we she would need to have different abilities when you play her. Well, okay. What I was going to say is, look at all the reskins from World of Warcraft. There's a lot of them. There is a whole hell of a lot of reskins in World of Warcraft. And uh, I think uh, what that has accomplished is just having, you know, 47 different characters, you know, that are all the same thing. They all do the same thing, but, you know, they're all slightly different. But it's the exact same thing. You just give them a different name. And this, I think, is essentially that, only it's on a better scale. Uh, because you could, you, you know, you, you could have, like, for example, Tracer, and you could have her reskin, and then you could have one for the other characters, and then their reskins, and even though they may have the same abilities, you know, you can pretend they're a different, like, it, it, it's workable enough, it could be a different character. It's not like looking at the uh, 850,000 different spiders in World of Warcraft, and realizing there's only about five bottle skins between them. It's not like you're doing that. It's like, oh, hey, this could really pretend, you know, you could pretend this is a different character. Because it's, it's, it's kind of intended to be, you know, like there's some uh, that were created, uh, you know, initially that, you know, they have uh, the, the, the prequel characters. And you could say, well, that's different enough to be the same part, you know, be a different person. That, that's just my perspective. So I think, you know, for, for, for my own reasoning, I'm going to include... Uh, the reskins and pretend they're different characters because it's just, it's just it's just my thing. I'm weird like that. You are weird. We 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 know. But I mean, yeah, I'm really really excited for this game, and I'm I I I I want to see how the story plays out, how it's going to interact. Um. It, it seems like it, it, it's one of, uh, possibly the new newest biggest lore things that they've done in a long time, and I'm just wondering how that's gonna work. Which in a game where it's mostly just a a multiplayer shooter, uh, which is just versus for the most part. At least from what I'm saying. Um, well, see, you can work uh, story elements in the games. I mean, they do it all the time. Uh, Final Fantasy is essentially, well, the newer ones are kind of this type, same type of game. You know, they're not all that way, uh, but the way they're played, you know, like the multiplayer aspect, you know, where you go through and you fight monsters and everything, you know, but they still manage to tell a story. So if you want to look at it that way, that works. Call of Duty has got a story. Halo has got a story. Like, games where they're genuine first-person shooters, they do manage well, to tell I, a consistent story. Well, I'm wondering if they're going to have a single-player story and along with the multiplayer. Um, because that's how Call of Duty does that. Um, they have their single-player campaign, and then they have the multiplayer, which is what most people play for, for the most part. But... It, it'll be interesting. I think it's because entirely possible. I'm, uh, I think it's I'm entirely just possible as excited for the story, story as mode. I am for the gameplay. I think it's. Well, I, I, I might. Well, I might even be more excited for the story than the gameplay. I see. I don't know if Blizzard will do that, but I am hoping that they do a story mode uh, version of uh, of Overwatch because that would be awesome. You know, get see, you know, you, instead of watching, you know, instead of getting on and playing the multiplayer game, which I realize is going to be, you know, the most fascinating part of it, it's what's going to get the biggest deal, you know, uh, because it's good for esport type events. But I think that uh, making like a story mode, you know, somewhere where you go, go and you learn things, because if you watched uh, the recent trailer they had at BlizzCon, uh, there was clearly uh, characters, I cannot remember their names off my head. Uh, but they are clearly in opposition to one another. And I think, you know, understanding a little bit more about those characters would be really beneficial. Oh, uh, you mean Hanzo and um, his brother? Um, I can't think of his Yes, those two. Uh, right the now. Archer yeah. and then the Green Robot Ninja, which is what everyone calls him. Genji. Genji, that's it, Genji. Yeah, Gen Hanzo and Genji. 
Yeah, and uh, there's um, like in the original trailer, there was a Tracer and a Wilson versus Black Widow and um, Spectre. Um, I, I I'm really really excited. I, there there's so much potential here. And um, we we talk about how all the time how World of Warcraft is you know uh, not the same or well, well what is Blizzard doing or what is Blizzard trying to do well um, clearly they took some of those people and put them on these teams in my opinion. You mean about how uh, Blizzard has been accused of having stereotypical characters before, so they sat down and came up with, I believe her name is Zarya, she's pink-haired, and she's Russian, and she's not, she's not a typical f female role that you see in video games, she's really not. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever heard Blizzard accused of that so much as, but they, uh, yeah, she's definitely not. They were, uh, it actually came out of uh, the Gamergate movement. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to accuse Anita Sarkeesian or anyone else, uh, like Zoe Quinn, being a part of this. Uh, but it was that same line of thought. It's like, hey, Blizzard, why don't you have more inclusive types of characters? You know, because women, you know, are not all these, you know, thin uh, individuals who are like, oh, help me, and I'm weak, and I'm underpowered. You know, so uh, Blizzard, like I said, they created a bulked up Russian woman who is capable of kicking the shit out of you, and she uses guns, and she's pink-haired, and she's awesome, and I like her. And when she was introduced, uh, people were like, oh, wow! That's awesome! And it, it, it was kind of proof to me that Blizzard actually does listen to what their fans have to say, and they do care. I, I'm still not sure I would buy that argument. I mean, I, I certainly like the character just because she is very different from the, the normal standard, but... There's been a lot of strong female characters in Blizzard games before. Um, sure, they have the same body type, but men almost always have the same body type too. So, see, it, I'm okay. And, and the the picture here, yeah, they're, they're, the the male has a very different body type from normal. Um, I okay. I I I just want to make this clear. I am in no way accusing Blizzard. Of being sexist or racist, whatever you know, I, like I'm, I'm not trying to say, you know, that Blizzard purposely designs these weak female characters. Blizzard is I mean, consistent. we've had Blizzard is consistently. Jaina, Kerrigan, there, there's been all kinds of major female players in their games. Yeah, and we've even discussed it on the show. Blizzard is consistently one of the game makers who creates strong female characters. Like, like you said, like Kerrigan. I mean, Kerrigan initially starts out, you know, this everyday female character, and then something horrible she, happens, and then she becomes the most badass character in 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 the series of StarCraft. I mean, she was she's amazing. She literally becomes the hope of the galaxy. She does. And uh, if you have not finished StarCraft Two, uh, you know uh, the Legacy of the Void thing. I know what happens to Kerrigan at the end of it. And it's like, holy fuck! Because, you know, I mean, even though I don't play StarCraft, I am aware of aspects of Kerrigan. So to know, you know, what happens at the end of StarCraft, I'm like, damn, I need to play this game because I want to see this shit firsthand. You know, like, I want to play it and, you know, see her uh, evolution, you know, from being, you know, just essentially a little ghost armored character, you know, where she didn't have anything important going on to being the badass that she is. It's amazing. And Blizzard would, did really good with that. They managed to do the same thing with Jaina Proudmore. Initially, you know, she's this little weak character. You know, she's just a love interest. You know, then all of a sudden, the flip, the, the, the switch gets flipped, and, you know, she tries, she says, you know, she tries to remove herself from the conflict. She tries very hard uh, to solve the problems of the world, the diplomacy and everything, and, and things just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And finally, you know, she gets to the point where she's flinging uh, Sun Reavers in the air and teleporting them on, out of Dalaran and letting them drop to their death. And it's like, wow, she kind of went crazy. Oh, and she raised, uh, raising a tidal wave to literally destroy all of Ugramar. Yes, yes, 
yes, it's insane. Jay, I mean, now, now I'm not saying, you know, that Jaina is, you know, not still that, you know, feminine character, you know, who needs to be saved. Because, I, honestly, I think she does need some kind of intervention at some, 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 some point in time. You know, like, someone everyone needs, needs to... Everyone needs to be saved, whether you're male or female. You, you, at some point in your life, you need someone to save you. But, yeah, like, really, I think Blizzard is really good at designing characters like that. You know, they design uh, characters intentionally. Uh, for example, uh, with uh, Overwatch, one of the new characters introduced is D.Va. Uh, she's a little Korean girl, you know, she's cute, uh, but she has a powered suit of armor that has machine guns and everything, and, like, she, you know, kind of slides into it, and she controls it like a mech, and she essentially becomes a tank while she's in here, and she's kind of invincible, uh, but she's capable of jumping out of this machine and fighting on her own, and the gameplay I have seen for D.Va is impressive because she is exceptionally powerful she is probably one of the more powerful heroes in the game just from having watched the game player because you know like i said she has that invulnerable suit of armor and then she and, and like it's 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 crazy uh you you essentially get two characters with one with you you get the suit of armor which is capable of functioning on its own and then you get her and i think the intention here is to make uh her essentially like iron man you know uh, Iron Man's suit of armor can actually function without Tony Stark inside of it. And you see that in uh, the second Avengers movie, you know, where he tells it to go sentry mode, and it stands there, it holds its hand out, and starts looking around like it's going to fight. It's, it's, it's incredible, and I, and I like the design for D.Va just because of that. Like, she's one of my favorite new characters. Actually, my favorite character is uh, the one they showed up, Blue uh the ice um, scientist lady, young lady. Um, I can't think of her name right now. Um, uh, that would be May. She, yeah, May just looks really, really cool. She, she's a climatologist, then she's a scientist, and she's in the middle of all these fights, and just, but she, she's an amazing support character, and just, her ice abilities are just completely badass. I I also like her character design. Uh, oh yes, that, uh, I I actually saw her compared to a uh, female Pandaren. Yes, and uh, I actually it's, it's like actually, that really. Com I actually uh, like the comparison. Her uh, voice actress is actually the same voice actress for Lily, and the you know the way she talks and everything. You can like okay, go look her up, and you'll see. Like, okay, for example, if, if you're familiar with Lily, you know, you'll see, you know, the comparison. I mean, like, she kind of has, you know, because she has the gloves and the body arm, like, she's all padded up and everything. And the way she talks, she even has a little pin in her hair. Yes, she she is very much like a female Pandaren. And I was like, wow, that's kind of cute. Uh, but uh, she seems to be easily paired with D.Va, which is kind of cool to think about it. Uh, she and... she's easily paired with any of the characters. Honestly, I I saw some gameplay with her, and she's just um, an amazing support character. Like, uh, uh it, it, anyone that can just shoot, well, she, she she can disable them, and then you shoot them, and then you win. It, it, it's she can build walls. She can uh, raise characters up to where they normally can't get. Um, she can do blizzards. It's amazing. Blizzard's done really well with balancing their characters. I mean, you know, they have, you know, the established tank healer DPS functions. Uh, but the way that they have, uh, fixed the characters together is it's it's very important. Uh, which heroes you pick for your team I, in Overwatch? Like it's it's I, really really important. You know, to try and well, you can things. also switch heroes while you're doing Overwatch, if I remember right. While you're in the uh, middle of a match, I you can say switch that heroes. You can, uh, but I'm not uh, if like I rem like I, I I'm, I'm, I'm honestly yeah. not overly comfortable saying that you know you're able to because I because I could be very wrong. I, I could be very very wrong about that. If I remember right, the um, uh, it, it's it become somewhat of a controversial issue. Because uh, people think you should only be able to pick one character and have to stay with it the entire match. But um, I think 
Blizzard disagrees with that, and they're arguing and saying that um, the entire design is around the ability to f pick characters to fit the situations. Um, so See, it's a it's an interesting mix. I okay, I like the idea of having you know your set character roster, and then you go with that. You know, like it it's 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 the way most games have been, and it teaches you to either become better. At that at, at that one type of character, or you switch out for another one to where you can get your team to work together. Like that's very important for team building. Uh, but the idea that you might be able to switch a hero in and out is also cool. And I and I really have no problem with doing that because that might make things a lot better. Uh, you know, for team building. You know, you might say, well, hey, uh, I can't use May very well. I'm going to switch out for uh, Widow or whatever her name is. You know, you're going to switch out for a different function. And, and that way, you know, it makes your character uh, set up uh, for your team a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, I think it's a very cool and innovative idea. I can't think of another shooter that has a feature like that. And it's hard to innovate on shooters. It, it really is. Um, there's only so many ways that you can... Shoot someone in the head. There, there really Pretty is. Pretty much. Uh, but see, uh, uh, Blizzard is good at team building games, and uh, another one they have that's coming out soon. Uh, well, it's it's already out, but it's going to be uh, bolt up more as Heroes of the Storm, and they had some pretty good announcements for Heroes. And I know, have played a few games of Heroes of the Storm, but I'm by no means an expert on it. I okay. I played it when it was in alpha. You know, I got a, a tech alpha invite, and then I continued in beta. And it's during live. I've played a little bit. But, you know, we're talking about a year, year and a half here of playing a game. And honestly, and I don't mean this to be hurtful to Blizzard or anyone else, uh, especially those of you who enjoy playing it. Uh, it's easy for me to get burnt out in Heroes of the Storm. It really, really is. Uh, I and th I like games like that. I really do. I like RTS t t style games, but it's just really easy for me playing Heroes. You know, just to get tired of playing it. You know, just it's it's really easy for me. For me, it's um. I think there are different types of RTS games, and um. I think even in uh, Starcraft Two. Um, in StarCraft 2, you go through different phases of different types of RTS games, which is one of the reasons that it's a really good game and a really interesting game. But it's also part of why some people may not like it as much as others. Um, because, um, for instance, like I was saying the other show, um, I like games where I have a set number of troops and I have to work with, with what I have against some amount of enemy. I'm really, really, really good at that. I, I love to do that. I love to strategize and plan with that. Um, because the way my mind works and the way I think, um, I can be like, okay, these guys here, these guys here, whatever. Um, it gets more, it gets harder for me, actually, when I can keep building troops or keep making troops or keep adding to that or changing the dimension because... Um, the way I start thinking is I try to think of all the possibilities, and I kind of slow myself down and bog myself down, which is See, a little bit annoying to me. I'm the opposite of you. Uh, you know, playing games like Warcraft 3 and whatnot, uh, I like to build up my reserves and then just make, you know, uh, as many basic units as I possibly can and just use those over and over and over again because they're easily produced and they're easy, you know, to, to uh, send in, and you, you can make a bunch of them, and I, and I like the idea of that, and that's, you know, of course, how the idea of Zerg swarming became a thing, you know, because Zerg players were famous for making a bunch of their low-level uh, minions and just sending them at the opponents, and it works, and it's a decent style of gameplay, uh, but you can't really yeah, do yeah. that with Overwatch. With Overwatch, you have to maintain, uh, you know, your hero... You have to lead them directly, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. Like, it's consistently requiring you to function at some level of accomplishing, you know, all the side goals and taking down bears and everything. You have to do 
this, and you have to do that, and and it's and it's a lot. It, it's to manage. It's kind of it's kind of to me like the equivalent of comparing Ultric Valley to Arafi Basin in World of Warcraft. Um, in Ultric Valley, what usually ends up happening is, I mean, it used to be back in the day that uh, you know, you would have a lot of people doing a lot of different things and trying to get all the side quests done and all that. But eventually what started happening is people just started zerking. And they just started going all out and, you know, just running in there and just a giant melee in the middle of the field. And whoever won that tended to win the entire battle. Um, You're talking I, about what happened during Wrath of the Lich King when Death Knights came out and they were very, very, very overpowered, particularly at low levels. Well, even after that, during um, Cataclysm and Mist of Pandaria, any time I go into Alter Valley, it's almost always um, a giant melee in the middle, and a, maybe a few people, five to ten people, try to break off and accomplish some of the goals, um, successfully or not successfully. Um, but there, there's um, the it, it, it's a very equivalent to StarCraft Two to me in a lot of ways um, because it, it's basically you build a giant army and you just go march at each other and um, sure you if you have a skilled group of people or skilled team you can make it much more nuanced and do much more advanced strategies but zerging is generally the preferred method. Um, in Arafi Basin, even though Zerging is still popular there, um, often, um, especially in competitive play, um, you have small groups of people working together to accomplish a bunch of goals um, and doing a variety of different things at the same time, um, trying to hold the lumber mill or the mine or the blacksmith and shifting troops to reinforce and things like that and um, reinforcements are much harder to come by you usually if you if someone dies at a point you've pretty much lost that point usually um, Honestly, it, okay. it, I don't, I, it's a very I, I different don't know style when the last of gameplay time you played a Rothy Basin was uh, but every time I've gone in there past several games that I've gone there now granted I don't PvP as much as I used to uh, but the past several times I've gone into a Rothy Basin, uh, it's been really bad. I mean, it's, you know, everyone groups up, and they run to a base, they camp, and they run to another one, and they camp, and they just keep running and running and running around and around and around. And I have noticed this really badly as Alliance, uh, but Horde players don't seem to do that. Horde players seem to group up at a base and capture a base, and they hold it. And I don't know if that's because the more experienced players are playing Horde, which they always have, or what. Actually, but it's, it's weird. It strange. used to be the reverse. It, it honestly used to be the reverse. When, whenever I play the Alliance, I find the reverse to be true, which is weird. But I, I I do remember seeing it a long time ago. You know, quite a while back. Uh, but you know, but the reality is, particularly with the Rothy Basin, Horde actually starts off at a disadvantage. Uh, it's actually harder for Horde players to capture bases uh, because most Alliance players go immediately. And this is something I notice all the time. Uh, they they almost immediately go to the lumber mill, you know. And uh, it's yeah. really difficult. It's it's really difficult to get players to understand in a Rothy Basin uh, that you need to hold uh, the stables or the st oh, st stables or farm, whichever end you're on. And you need to hold uh, the lumber mill, and you need to hold uh, the base in the middle. Screw the mine. Don't worry about it. It's all but indefensible. And the reason you yeah, need you know, the base is you can jump over. Yeah. You, you can yeah. Go, jump down into it. And, and you can easily support the mine, from, or not the mine, the blacksmith from the lumber mill. Yes, you can. Like, uh, wh whatever your home base is, and the lumber mill, and the blacksmith, they're like they make a little triangle, and it's easy to support that. And players have somehow forgotten about doing that after all these years. And it's kind of sad to think about, you know, that used to be the way you won. If you captured uh, your home base and you captured, you know, the lumber mill and you got the blacksmith, you were going to win, but not now. 
Well, it used to be uh, Horde would capture Blacksmith immediately, Alliance would capture Lumber Mill immediately, and then the fight would be over the mines. Um, and the the real fight would be if uh, Alliance could hold the mines, they had a huge disadvantage because trying to get support from the mines to the Lumber Mill in time is nearly impossible. Um, so it was always... It, it, it was really interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, or, or enough, I'm sorry, it's totally sidetracked off of Heroes of the Storm, which is a really cool game, and yeah, I mean, um, there's a lot of cool characters with a lot of neat features, and it, I, I, I have nothing bad to say about the game, certainly. I don't. I, uh, I, I, I really don't know anyone who has anything bad to say about. It. I mean, it's it's not my favorite game to play, you know. And I and I haven't touched it in several months. Uh, but I do try and keep up with them introducing in uh, new heroes from time to time. My favorite. Uh, but I'm sorry. My favorite hero so far has been um 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 Raynard. Um, just the basic hero that you get at the beginning. He's honestly my favorite uh, hero to play. I, I just find it really just uh, he he feels natural to me when it, when I play him. I kind of like Muradin, but but that's because I'm I, I am a fan of dwarves. Muradin. Yeah, I mean Mur cool. Muradin is cool. I just like the idea of him taking an axe and a mace and running around and smashing people in the face. <laughs> There's nothing not to like about that. So, do we have anything else to talk about? Well, we're still talking about Heroes of the Storm. Oh, oh, spe speaking speaking, which I, didn't, I just not thought about it. Uh, on our graphic, of course, you know, everyone can see Chogol, or you should be able to unless it's lagging. Uh, but oh uh, yeah, Chogol. He, he sounds yeah. really exciting. Chogol is probably the most badass thing they've added to Heroes of the Storm. Uh, everyone who was at BlizzCon, We're everybody almost who was at any other game. Do what? He might be the badass thing they've added to any of their games, honestly. Well, at least the way that he functions in Heroes. Uh, for the, for everyone who was at BlizzCon, they have gotten Chogol added to their account. Uh, and there's there's going to be a way to get him in the future, uh, but it's all going to involve uh, having to know someone who has already got Shogal. And basically, what it is, uh, it's for it's it's for like a multiplayer type setup. Uh, your team will have Shogal. Uh, one of you will control one head, the other one will control the other head, and then you have to work together to make Shogal function. And that's Insane to begin with, uh, but it's also very much like uh, how Cho like like basically okay. If you know anything about the ogres in World of Warcraft, if they have two heads, it's two separate personalities, and they essentially each control uh, one half of the body. You know, like one one whole side of the body is controlled by one head or the other, and the two heads have to be able to agree with one another and work together. In order to do anything at all. And of course Shogal was the first ogre. That functioned that way. So what so what Blizzard is doing. Is they're making one player. You know have control of one side of him. And another player gets to have control. Of another side of him. So you get to run around. <laughs> essentially playing a two player game. Even if you're only in a single person matchup. Because you have to, be able I, to I'm, control I'm Shogal. I'm really curious if. I'm really curious if it's going to be like one player can control the movement and the other player can control the spells, or be uh, like how is, I I really want to know how that's going to work because well, it sounds think, fun and amazing. I think if they do that, but that's I, actually a really decent way to divide it up. You know, you know, you know, like one player is in charge of you know moving him, like you said. 
and and, and maybe like in, in any ability he has that's physical, but the other player is in charge of controlling the minions and the spells and whatnot, which is it's it's insane to think about, and it's and I can see a lot of players who get that you know who who get Cho'Gal uh, absolutely being able to win because it's it really is a neat idea, and I like the idea and I'm and I'm excited for it. So maybe I'm really excited for it. Maybe we all need to get Cho'Gal, you know. Maybe we need to go play Heroes of the Storm and stop complaining about the playstyle. Probably. I don't. I don't know. I I don't know. Do you do Do you really want to play Heroes of the Storm? I mean, it's. If I can be a two-headed ogre, where I have to battle for control of the ogre with someone else at the same time, that. Uh, I'd be okay with that. Uh, I will see. I would like to do that, but it would just be getting Joe Gall, and I don't know anyone. I really don't know anyone who plays heroes anymore. I really don't. I, I did for a while, uh, but I think well, everyone is now playing StarCraft. Well, from what I heard, um, it, it's going to be like a virus. Um, you have to play four times with someone that has Joe Gall. And then you get your goal, and then you play four times with someone else, and it, so on and so forth. So eventually, a lot of people should have your goal, if not everyone. See, I think it. it, it well, okay. It it makes sense, but again, you know, you have to know someone who's got your goal, and then you have to be make friends with them, which of course is you know just encouragement to actually add people. To your battle tag, and you know, do this and do that. But I mean, it it, it it it's a nice way to get people involved. But really, is anyone going to play Heroes of the Storm that much? Cause I I don't really know anybody who does. Um, I'm sure we can find someone. I, I I'm sure at least at the very least, the people at BlizzCon will play at least to play Chogol. I don't know. I'm I'm actually still kind of jealous for Scott having gone to BlizzCon, uh, which means you know he 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 has absolutely got his uh, Cho'Gall by now. But I I don't think he yeah, plays we, heroes either. We can we can go ask him. We, we like uh, play with us. Just just, just we'll probably have just, to. Just play. But everyone's gonna be like, come come play with us. And then I'll be like, I don't want to. And then we'll be like, you have to. See, okay, my one big fear here is that uh, Cho'Gall will make everyone dependent on having Cho'Gall. You know, like it's going to be eventually, and and this is probably a very well-founded fear for here. Uh, I'm thinking that once everyone, you know, once someone gets Cho'Gall, they're going to essentially start dominating all the games. And that's going to be bad. It's going to make everyone else have to get Cho'Gall. It's like, oh my god, they have to have Cho'Gall in order to play the game. And 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 that's going to be kind of strange and weird and will discourage a lot of people from playing because they will not be able to get access to Cho'Gall. I think you're just a cynic and crazy and wearing a tinfoil hat right now. Well, uh, I did watch the Republican debate last night, so that kind of goes along with it. But yeah. So you have a tinfoil hat on right now? Yep, I do. I always wear it. I always wear a tinfoil hat. Yep. Except when we do Radio Tokyo, but you know, well, may maybe the conspiracy episode I did, but that 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 was then. But I think that is going to be it for this episode. Uh, we're going to have one more on Friday. Wow. It it, it 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 didn't seem like it's been that many, but yeah, we're gonna talk about all the big changes to World of Warcraft on Friday. Uh, now, if you you know have access to the internet, a, 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 a lot, excuse me, uh, had access to the internet all today, you know, or this past week, you may have already seen that all of the blogs are out. Apparently, uh, Blizzard has updated everything. It seems instead of you know waiting it, you know, doing day by day. Uh, so the information's already out there, but we're still gonna cover it because we promised all of you. Last week, we were going to cover it. So, we will talk to all of you on Friday 
and we'll talk about the Warcraft movie, we'll talk about Legion, we'll talk about the current state of War of the Lords of Draenor, and I don't know, whatever, whatever else Nick wants to hijack the conversation and talk about. Which will be whatever you want to talk about, basically. No, no, it'll be, it'll be whatever you want to talk about, because we all know that you think you're in charge. See, d d d this is why Batman doesn't make rational arguments. This is why Batman controls the Watchtower and builds all the cool shit because he's the one who's secretly in charge and everyone else is like, but Batman... No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm just gonna let, 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 let you uh, have that and fly away now. Let me enjoy my delusions of grandeur. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we will talk to all of you on Friday. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like this video, comment on it, share it, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, tell Nick how much you can't stand him, and get excited for the Warcraft coverage because we will be doing that on Friday. Really looking forward to doing it, and I hope that all of you come back and enjoy that too, and you know, don't maybe watch other videos by other people who do their discussion about Warcraft. Come to Radio Tokyo for information because we are awesome. Dun 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 dun. dun. We are awesome. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. We will see you Friday. Have a great, great couple days till then. Bye, everybody.